Hello, Nina from Dragon's Garden here. Let's make a cool fire tiger plushie together. Rawr. This tutorial can be applied to almost every laying down pattern in our store by the way that you sew the pieces together. So we will be doing multiple pieces in the same hoop to save time and because I'm lazy, we will tuck it down with the busting stitch to prevent moving and puckering. Put on the piece of fabric large enough to fit the head, body and tail. This pattern has a plique so you will not need the top stabilizer yet. Follow the applique steps specified in the pattern. You can see a detailed explanation of how a plique is set up in the video linked. Add the different color fabric piece on top, then let it stitch and cut the excess fabric around it. You can use one large piece or even multiple scraps if you want to save fabric. Then you can put a piece on, stitch it, stop the machine, trim it a bit and move to the next section. After a plique is done, now it's the time to add the top water soluble stabilizer. Embroidery is all done and what is left is the outline. Now we can remove the top stabilizer. Make sure the fabric or stabilizer of the hooping does not move. Put a piece of fabric with good side down to make a nice sandwich, then let the outline of the head stitch. Due to multiple hoopings, we will have to work in sections just like with the applique. The fabric piece I used was large enough to cover the tail too, so trimming on top wasn't needed in this case. But in general, between each section, stop the machine and trim the fabric a bit so it will not interfere with the next section. After trimming, repeat the same step for the body. I attached the Dragon's Garden label and used a different color fabric for the belly to tie in with the dark blue details from the embroidery stripes. If you use a large piece of fabric, watch out that it doesn't interfere with the embroidery foot. You can even tape it down to the hoop to make sure it doesn't curl too much or just keep a watchful eye with your finger on the stop button. And we are done with the tiger! You can take everything out of the hoop and move to the next embroidery file. Now it's time to repeat the same steps and embroidery the wings. This step follows the same steps with applique, stitching and sandwiching the fabric, so let's speed it up! And now it's time for assembly. Start out by removing as much stabilizer as you can to protect your fabric scissors. Cut the pieces out so it will be easier to work with each separate one. Clip the fabric following the graphics Cut into the corners and curves to make things easier to turn. The more time you spend on this step, the neater your plushie will look and turning will be easier. I don't leave my outlines open for turning, I prefer to cut into the head and body and stitch those up instead to keep my outlines tidy. Cut extra fabric away from the applique so it will be less stiff to turn. Turn each piece inside out. The easiest way is to use hemostats, chopsticks, ribbon turners or even your fingers will work too. Make sure to push out the edges from the inside, especially on the spiky part of the wings or the face. For stuffing I like to use polyfill as it gives the proper shape to the plushie. I like to stuff the tail and body lightly and the head a bit more firmly. For the wings, just put a bit of stuffing at the base so it keeps the same shape and helps with uh, sewing them on. But you can of course choose a different way if that fits you best. Sew all the openings closed with the ladder stitch. Start by pushing in the needle and the knot from inside out and then the first stitch in order to hide the knot on the inside. From there on keep pushing the needle in and out on the same side then switch to the next side of the opening to create a little ladder effect. Keep pulling the thread between each stitch so the opening will close as you go and will not leave you with any loose loops. When the entire hole is closed you can go ahead and create a knot by pushing the needle through one of the created loops a few times to make it secure. Repeat the same for the head of the plushie.
I like to start with the head first. I place two stitches, one on the head and one on the body, and pull them together to give me an idea if the head is in the correct spot. I put the knot around the same area I had the knot from the ladder stitch before to hide it better so it will stay on the inside. And the needle then goes to the body area of the ladder stitch knot. We will be using the ladder stitch again to stitch all around the head and body. Try envisioning a little rectangle on the body area and stitch the head to it going around a few times until the stitches feel secure. When you're happy with it, make a knot. If the head is too far back, then put a few short stitches at the front. If you find your plushy head drops too much to the front, place a few extra ladder stitches on the back in order to tilt it backwards more. If you use the rectangle idea from before, if you stitch around a smaller rectangle, the head will be more dynamic and can turn, and if you stitch around a larger rectangle, the head will be more in place and it won't turn. So many possibilities! Let's move to the tail. We will be stitching around the opening of the tail to the base of the butt. Just like with the head, there are different possibilities for a different look. You can stitch it upwards for a more excited kitty look, flat for a more relaxed feel like I do, or you can cut a bit of the base off diagonally and stitch it more tilted for a waggy tail look. Attach the tail with a couple of stitches first to be in place and make it easier to sew around. Flip the plushie as you go along to make it easier to see between the leg area. If you want a basic tree hoop tiger slash kitty slash creature, you can stop here. But we will go ahead and stitch the fire wings for some extra cool effect. Attach the wings on almost a straight line behind the head and going more towards the edge of the body. This way they will show better when you look at the plushie from the front. You can also choose to attach them in a more diagonal line so they can show better from the side, or even flat on the back for a totally different effect. And your new friend is finished! Now it's time for snuggles! Come and check out our website if you're looking for more amazing projects like this. Also while you're there, don't forget to check out our freebie section. We also have a couple of Into Hoop freebies you can just freely use. A big thanks goes to my supporters on Patreon because they're just so wonderful and make all of these videos and patterns possible. Thanks! See you next time!